guess you could say it's getting kind of serious. Hi, I am Rachel from Seven and All. I'm a second generation homeschool mom to three young boys and I have been using Math with Confidence for quite a while now. I have used kindergarten through third grade. We're in the second half of the third grade level now, planning to head straight on into fourth grade in this next school year. So I wanted to make a video about why I like Math with Confidence so much. It has been really undeniably fun to just have stumbled across this curriculum at the beginning of my homeschooling journey with my oldest son and have found it to be such a great fit for our family that we've been able to just stick with it for years. It is not the only resource we use for math. If you watch my channel, you know that I believe that math education should be a feast and I love to bring in other math resources as well, but this has been a definite standby for us for years and I will be continuing to use it for years to come. So here's why. Every lesson begins with a review. There is memory work, review and some kind of warm up game. Here's why I like this. I am not the kind of person that naturally remembers to review stuff. I am the kind of person that loves to teach something once, but then, you know, review that sounds boring. I don't, I don't need to do review. Why would my student need to do review? But most students actually do need the review and most students do actually benefit from review. I am the kind of teacher that if my, uh, teacher's book does remind me to, hey, ask my student, what do we call fractions that look different but have the same value and to have them answer equivalent fractions? I will do it because my teacher's book told me to and I will say, oh yeah, that is great. That is great for them to review that vocabulary. Um, the warm-up activity here is to play fraction more. Um, we don't do every single review because sometimes I will look at the review and I will know that my child knows this, that he has it down solid and will just move past it. Um, but I love that the review is there because it's a good reminder for me, not naturally the person that remembers, oh yeah, we need to review this, we need to review this. I like using a curriculum that reminds me to do that simple thing of review the curriculum. I like using a curriculum that reminds me to take that simple step of doing quick reviews of these skills. Next up, this is a curriculum that includes math games, but don't run away just yet. These are not the kind of games where you're going to need to cut out a bunch of pieces and gather all these things. This is not complicated. Um, you are going to need some things. The vast majority of games that I have done in the past couple years have been either a deck of cards or a couple of dice and some little counter like bingo counter things that you put on the page. The games themselves are in the book, on the lesson page. You're not turning to something else. You're not finding a game board from somewhere else. You're not buying 10 different math games to play for extra reinforcement and remembering that you have those games in your cupboard for extra practice when your kid needs extra practice. None of that. It is just simple to me. For me, it is simple because I have, I have a deck of cards. I have the dice. I have the little counters that you put on. Um, so because it is simple, I am actually using these games. I wouldn't want to have a game cupboard full of 10 different math games, but I, I can have a deck of cards. I can have the dice and we just play these games. They're usually really fast, you know, five, maybe 10 minutes if my kid talks me into playing it more than once because they love the game. Um, but I like how simple she makes the games. Also, and this might not happen right away when you first start using the curriculum, but a lot of the games are really similar. They're adaptations on the same game that you were using before. So um, because I've been using the same curriculum for years, I'm not really like having to read the instructions and do a whole lot of teaching, you know, understanding how do we play this game again? It's not complicated. I can look at the game and probably barely read the instructions and I already know, okay, yeah, this is this game. We've played this game before and now we're just playing it with a different set of multiplication tables or whatever. Um, the game, sorry, I love that it has games, but it doesn't over overcomplicate them. And when you use the curriculum consistently, you kind of already know how to play the games because it's just the same handful of games adapted in different ways. And Yes, games might take a little bit more time than, you know, just sitting down and filling in the answers to problems, but they have been really fun and a great way to connect with my boys. They have really enjoyed them and responded well to them. Number three, I love that they have scripted teaching lessons. You cannot skip the teacher's guide. 
they have the whole scripted activity and lesson of what you're supposed to do in here, how to teach different skills in here. They make it very clear what you're supposed to ask your child and what they're supposed to do. I appreciate that. That does not mean that I am reading the script every time. There are some times, especially with one of my sons who is very quick with math, that I will look at the lesson for the day and be like, yeah, he already knows all of this. He knows it very well. Okay, I'll just quick summarize it or I'll see, okay, there's this one strategy. I'll teach him this one new strategy um, and teach him just that part of it. So I do summarize the lessons when it fits the situation, but then there's other times with a brand new concept or a concept my child really doesn't know where I am following that step-by-step -step activity. So the script is there for me to use and it's also there for me to adapt and to make it my own and I do appreciate that. Next up, variety. The student books have a lot of variety. They are not exactly the same every day. And they also don't have too much variety. There are not like long chunks of instructions saying how to do this new type of problem. The instructions are short, simple, to the point, you know, one sentence instructions on how to do this section of the page, and they can do it, but then they go to the next page the next day and the problems will probably be presented in a slightly different way or they'll be reviewing a different skill, different topic. So to me, it has felt like a very nice blend of variety but consistency. For me, it really hits that sweet spot. Next up, uh, when you look at the student books, you might at first think this looks really simple, especially when you're looking at like the kindergarten workbook. Be like, this looks really simple. But actually, when you get into the lessons, when you're really reading and realizing what um, is being taught here, you realize actually they're challenging your child. They're challenging them to really think about numbers, to really think about how they can use strategies to understand what is going on here. When you start getting up into third grade and to some of these multi-step um, math problems, you will really realize the foundation that they were laying was always systematically leading toward this more complex thinking skills that are needed to solve multi-step problems the thinking skills that are needed to understand, hey, I know what's going on here. I know what I need to do with these numbers to get the right answer. So this does promote deep analytical thinking skills about math. Next up, the amount of problems is never feels like it's too much. Um, I know many of you guys probably might have grown up with something like a, a Becca or Saxon math. And it was kind of a famous thing um, back then and probably still to this day that, hey, oh, I'm only gonna do the even problems in Saxon math. I'm only gonna do the odd problems today in Saxon math because there was a lot of problems. Um, and so there were different systems that we would use like that to cut down on the amount of problems uh, for Abeka as well for some of the um, upper elementary grades. There's just a lot of problems and it can kind of feel like a drag. Uh, through all the levels so far, it has never felt like there's too many problems. Again, it has kind of felt like it hits that sweet spot of not too much and not too little. I'm never um, cutting the problems in half um, because my son is able to work through them in a reasonably timely fashion, in an appropriate timely fashion, um, and it is enough for him to master the material. Some kids are going to need more review. So um, with a child who's not grasping the skills as much, I will do extra review games. I have that freedom and flexibility to add in extra review as needed, um, but I've never really cut out any of the work pages. I have cut out some of the game reviews, as in, you know, repeat this game again, repeat this game again, if they are not needed. Uh, but as far as the actual worksheets, it has really, been a great amount of work that we're not cutting the amount of work in half or anything. It has not been overwhelming and it has also not been too little. So that is my quick little explanation of why I have appreciated Math with Confidence for all these years of homeschool so far. If you have any further questions about this program, leave them down in the comments below and I will try to answer based on our experiences. All right, I'll see you later. Bye.